Well, hello, this is Jeff Gadiosi, and you're on MisplacedDraws.com, where music comes to life. And my guest today is really on a roll. We talked last year when he put out a record called The Beast Awakens, which was one of the best metal records of last year. This year, he's back with a new band called Clean Break, and honestly, it's one of the best metal records of this year. The band is made up of the rhythm section of Robert Sweet and Perry Richardson of Striper, on guitar is the wildly underrated Mike Flint of Riot and Riot 5. And on vocals, my guest today, James Durbin. Welcome, James. Hey, hey, Jeff. Thank you for having me. Oh, my pleasure. So last year, you put out The Beast Awakens under the band name Durbin. And we talked at the time that it really brought back just this killer, traditional, old school metal sound, um, which continues into this record. What made you want to move to sort of a different band setup rather than come back with another Durbin record? Uh, Durbin takes a long time mm. uh, because Durbin is all my own brainchild. So with The Beast Awakens, that was written all throughout 2020. Mm. Um, yeah, uh, I, when I signed with Frontiers Records in... December of 2019, the original plan was to uh, release a solo album, which became Durban the Beast Awakens, mm -hmm. and then uh, shortly thereafter begin work on a, uh, a band. Uh, I, 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 I don't like the term because uh, I don't feel super. Uh, I just sing. <laughs> I sing and write songs. Uh, it's only it's only heavy metal, um, but yeah. super group for yeah. lack of a better term um, to put to bring together. So. Mm -hmm. It was kind of uh, always the plan. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm actively working on a follow-up to The Beast Awakens. And we actually also have our very first uh, Durban live uh, concert. Uh, oh, nice. That, that I just announced in San Francisco um, in August with fellow uh, Frontiers label mates Enough's Enough and uh, Hal Sparks' uh, Van Halen tribute, uh, Nerd Halen. So, oh, that's going to be awesome. It'll be a party. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I, again, I think that's kind of the big difference between the two. You mentioned how you write everything on Durbin and on this record with Clean Break, you got to write with just the incredible Alessandro Del Vecchio. And, and mm -hmm. I believe that actually is his name, the incredible Alessandro Del Vecchio. Oh, yeah, yeah. It, if, it, <laughs> yeah. If, it, if, it, if it wasn't his birth name, uh, he's definitely um, he's definitely earned it at, at this point. So when you guys began writing the record, did you already know that, okay, it's going to be Robert and Perry and Mike, so let's write to their strengths? Or did you guys just have a vision that you wrote and then brought the players in? It happened simultaneously. We definitely mm -hmm. had both uh, instances. Um, yeah, we, we started writing the record first and before all of the pieces were into place. We already had Perry and Robert uh, pretty much from the from the get-go mm -hmm. and all that was missing was Mike and so we uh, Alessandra and I had already begun writing a couple songs which for me personally just having come off of the heels of The Beast Awakens I tried to write but also I've got like a storage of ideas for Durban 2 mm -hmm. so I don't want to like definitely I didn't want to use like too many of those so I'm like well, Alessandro is a world-class phenomenal songwriter and I'm sure I'll love whatever he writes uh, and, and, and his, with his team of, of writers uh, as well. So, and, and I'm no stranger to that, you know, coming off of American Idol, my first record, I was touring on the Idol tour. And so that was kind of like the thing, that's kind of the thing in the pop world, really, you know, it was a pop rock record uh, of sorts uh, leaning heavier as far as I could nudge the scale uh, in that direction. But yeah, I'm, not, I'm no stranger to uh, singing and emoting songs that other people have written. It's, it's, you know, it's an interest, industry standard, just maybe not so much in the rock and metal world. Um, so I wrote two and one third songs on the record. <laughs> and that's what my credits say. Um, I wrote uh, Clean Break, the latest single, yeah. and the song which the band was named after, as well as... Uh, before the fall uh and um a three-way co-write i wrote the vocal melodies and lyrics and everything for um dream forever okay which i believe is going to be the third single on release day that's like mm. the 
spoiler alert <laughs> and it's cool too because like i said you were involved alessandro has his team of writers and, and brought in some really cool outside guys people like bill hudson who really have a foot in that traditional metal world was that alessandro reaching out to those guys or did you have some of those relationships no none of mine mm -hmm. uh, it's all alessandro as far as i know um yeah it's just the it's it's amazing to it was really something special to listen to the masters for the very first time because that was the first time that i was hearing everything coming together so that was the first time that i heard um what mike had done with his guitar solos uh you know using my demos as a um a placeholder mm. and to hear him like use some of my personal guitar you know noodlings uh in the demo to actually like formulate his solo and you know it's like my thoughts are canon in this universe this is awesome <laughs> my guitar thoughts wow um yeah it was it was really really just uh, awe-inspiring and humbling mm -hmm. so humbling uh to just hear how everything came together you know it's and, it's a uh, yeah a lot of different songwriters you know you can bring in all these different ideas and i don't know if everybody had heard what songs because like when i wrote sorry this is a long train oh, of thought um, go for it when i wrote before the fall and uh, and clean break i had not yet heard any other songs mm. these were just like kind of like durban afterburn but mm. less mystical you mm. know less less dio um but still but still somewhat Dio as I've, I've, I've heard uh, like oh it was the beginning of that sound like a Dio song yeah, the beginning of most of my songs would probably sound like a Dio song and just get used to it um uh <laughs> it lives in that world a a minor so you know um there you go yeah. 95 beats per minute in a minor yeah it's gonna sound like Dio uh but yeah just to hear everything come together was just it's something else it can't be beat can't be replicated you know, and Mike Flint from Riot and now Riot 5, you know, Mike's kind of one of those unsung but seminal American guitar players when you're talking about this traditional style of metal. You know, did, were you aware of Mike very much? And, and did you guys get to record together at all? Because I know this, I think Mike's out here on the East Coast, you're on the West. You know, did you guys really get to spend any time together? The only time that I've spent with my clean break bandmates was uh at the music video shoot which was just one day yeah it wasn't even like a full day it was like a half day um but it it, it already felt like we had known each other because mm. mike watched me on american idol and voted for me mm. and like big fan and and working with perry and working with robert and just like uh when i was with uh for the band i previously sang mm -hmm. for uh, for quite right for a few years um we played the frontiers rock festival and um that was uh perry's very first show with mm -hmm. striper so it was just funny so like mm -hmm. i had met him there and i was like oh cool nice to meet mm -hmm. you perry yeah. and then you know coming back and then doing this thing it's just like it was so fun you know it was like as soon as we got a case of budweiser's because it was all the thing i was like we get some like yummy craft beer or something you know <laughs> uh it's the hipster in me uh but you know uh then they brought back uh just a case of straight up budweiser and uh then we were all having a fun time eating eating uh meatballs and <laughs> drinking budweiser and perry's out there smoking cigars and we're just just shooting the shit and mm. and by the end of the day uh uh robert sweet gave me a kiss on the cheek so <laughs> It was a, blessed you, know, you into the band <laughs> the hard day's night and it was yeah. uh yeah it was definitely um sealed it with a kiss <laughs> yeah and like so you know riot just i i had interviewed uh rick ventura of riot a little while back and you know just the most unlucky band in the history of music but just such mm -hmm. a great band you know striper is a band everyone knows and even though they've gotten much heavier over the past 10 or 15 years yeah were you surprised when you heard the playback and heard just how hard perry and robert bring it on this record yes <laughs> yeah <laughs> absolutely and i mean to answer the previous question that i realized i didn't answer also uh um i wasn't really as aware of mike mm -hmm. mike's 
playing and it, just his level and his intricacies and and not even just that because like it's i i say this uh not being able to do so myself but looking at how many shredders there are it's like it's not necessarily that difficult to be a shredder mm -hmm. you just learn like precision picking yeah. and and you know mm -hmm. being able to control the fretboard uh quickly and efficiently but there's there's being a shredder and then there's uh, being able to walk that fine line of shredding but also um crafting a solo you know there's there's one way to go at it with just you know playing a blues scale but then there's like you mix there's more scales you know <laughs> um and and that's what mike does just so effortlessly and just some of the note choices that he makes um and and especially it, it incites that that feeling of listening to it for the first time after living with my demos and mm -hmm. then hearing them performed by mike flintz robert sweet and perry richardson <laughs> with uh, being produced by alessandro de veggio like <laughs> And and I'm singing on it. Little James Durbin <laughs> sitting here in his little stude, like me. Cool. Whoa. Um, yeah. I I I I'm I'm just so damn humbled all the time just by experiences and and uh, you know it hasn't hasn't been that long ago since I was since it doesn't feel like it you know since I was in my room at my mom's house uh, listening to YouTube videos and trying to like match vocals with you know all my favorite singers and. I've worked with most of them uh, mm. or worked in place of most of them. So it's, it's pretty outstanding. Well, and again, kind of along those lines, you know, I mean, uh, again, I'm sure as a kid, you're listening to Striper. Now here you are playing with those guys, but did you specifically seek out any bands to listen to, to sort of get you in the frame of mind for what clean break became? No, not really. I, I did that a lot with Durbin because mm. I really wanted it to be to live in that specific era. Mm. You know, I really wanted it to live in like 84. Mm. Um, but with like, I don't know, with you know, it lives in 84, which that means that it was, you know, growing up through the 70s. Yeah. So then it listened to like, you know, Sir Lord Baltimore and, <laughs> and Lucifer's <laughs> friend and, and like stuff like that. Um, but this, no, like I... I just kind of wrote and you know like i said i i wrote i penned uh two and a third mm -hmm. uh credits of songs uh for this record out of the 11 that i think mm -hmm. that are um on it so that wasn't necessarily like my doing mm -hmm. but i think that we did have an overall idea of american metal um yeah, I don't know. It's 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 kind of tricky. This is uh, this is the part of doing press for this album that I'm like, <laughs> how do I talk about this? Because uh, I'm not so sure. Um, yeah. yeah. Next question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, we talked a little bit last time too that you just have so many kind of styles in your repertoire. You know, from just the straight up hard rock to the more kind of pop rock coming out of Idol to the acoustic stuff that you did. You know, Durbin is a little more of the mystical side of metal where Clean Break mm. is, you know, a little more of the traditional. This seems, this the metal area of Durbin and Clean Break seems to be your sweet spot. Um, Thank you. It, it's really strong. Your voice is just killer for it. You Also, honestly, it seems like you're having fun doing it. Does this feel sort of like that sweet spot for you, this style? I'm definitely having... I don't know. I definitely feel the most authentic mm -hmm. now um, than ever before. And I don't, I, it's come with age also. Mm -hmm. It's come with age. The, the only thing that I wish to, this is my philosophy in life. Uh, mm -hmm. my, my only thing that I wish to gain, uh, if anything, um, in my life is wisdom. Mm -hmm. And wisdom comes, I, I've found from, kind of like shit <laughs> you know <laughs> you you find your way out of it and then you have the wisdom to not find yourself in it again hopefully yeah you know but it, it keeps happening if if like you know to finally learn from something i feel like you have to fail at it like time mm -hmm. and time again to, to finally understand 
you know, why. Hmm. Um, and it also goes the same way with like, if there's something that you really want, like for the longest time, I wanted to be the lead singer of a different band. Mm -hmm. um, and there were all these different opportunities and then it happened. And then did I, you know, mm -hmm. and then it, it, it happened. Mm -hmm. And so after it happened, it's like, oh, that happened. Who am I? Mm -hmm. And it was such a blessing that, you know, Frontiers reached out um, mm -hmm. and gave me the, I don't know, just a kick in the ass. Mm -hmm to kick some ass and uh you know to have a label approach you and be like we believe in you we want we think that you have great things to offer and and uh and um yeah it's it's really really something and then the pandemic hit and that was also a big kick in the ass because i was gonna do a bunch of co-writes i was gonna do this sort of thing like clean break mm -hmm. and i was trying to source songs from different writers and trying to connect with people to uh to do uh, co-writes and then the pandemic hit and then i said you know what w there's no i actually used um some encouragement that i got from rich ward uh, of fozzy <laughs> fozzy yeah. and uh he said durbin you're a hell of a guitar player you're an awesomely solid rhythm guitar player and you can riff and i heard you like noodling and playing some riffs and like you're really good do you do you believe that? <laughs> like basically like you should you don't you need to understand that you are good mm -hmm. you are good um and that was like i think about that all the time yeah. i think about that all the time because i'm a i second guess myself uh, mm -hmm. all the time especially live like mm -hmm. i'm a i'm a studio guitar player which is why you'll never probably never see me uh playing full band durbin mm -hmm. shows and definitely won't see me playing guitar with clean break and you know it's it's a uh, i'm comfortable here because there's no i don't know there's no one watching but um there's no there's no stakes you know it's i can i can hit the space bar and i can do another take um but i you know i formulate all this stuff so it's just like it's really enjoyable to figure out new riffs it's really enjoyable to figure out after you've found that riff and found that feel um, and that tone that this, that the song is going to take and then like searching for inspiration. Mm -hmm. um, and the cool thing about the beast awakens album is I found inspiration in so many places. Like I mm -hmm. found inspiration, but I wrote that album looking out a window mm -hmm. uh, in a condo and, and driving, um, just driving around i live in beautiful watsonville california mm. in santa cruz um and i just uh I, I last interview i did a couple weeks ago the guy said that i reminded him of dio mm. and how i i look at i i try to look at my surroundings and see magic and mm. just see like the lord's hand at work mm. or hopefully he's got two hands yeah. but, uh, <laughs> they it them she uh whoever whoever god is whatever god is wherever um but and and just feel that just feel that like this is all really weird you ever look at a tree a tree is weird um but i got to drive by the most beautiful mountains every day and see them out my window and i still do um, I manifested that I manifested a better view when we bought a house. Uh, but yeah, it's just, uh, I just try and just that next step, mm -hmm. you know, and, and finding the inspiration and finding the idea for the song. And it's just, I'm, I feel like I can do that in metal. I feel mm -hmm. like with heavy metal, with traditional, with new wave, British heavy metal, um, uh, thematic metal, like I can, there's no rules i don't i don't feel like there's any rules i mean there's some bands that might feel like there's rules and you have to be this you have to be this but that's across all genres there's people like that so and more power too um that's not my lane uh so good make that paper um but yeah like i just I'm, you you're picking up on it i, I just yeah, have a ton of yeah. fun it's heavy metal yeah. and i like it exactly and you know, with the two bands, you mentioned you're already, you know, writing the second Durbin record. And 
first of all, I guess in two parts, A, do you see Clean Break continuing past one record? And, and do you feel comfortable having you know those two outlets one sort of for that kind of mystical your vision kind of thing and another collaborating with you know these amazing talented players absolutely like i i see i mean durbin's gonna develop i mean um it's it's already developing it's already changing i'm already you know i i kind of want to go in some ways, I want to go for an even earlier sound than mm. uh, than what the Beast Awakens had, and a little less production. Not, I mean, tighter production, mm. um, cleaner production, but uh, a little less. You yeah. know, maybe not four different guitar parts mm. at, at the same time and, and that sort of thing. Um, and, uh, but in space <laughs> like i really love this this band called hollis i think that's how you pronounce it h-a-l-l-a-s um and they're like mystical and like retro and vintage and like uh the singer looks like my aunt did in high school and and they're swedish and you know they're awesome because every every type of music that the swedes do is yeah. just like the greatest thing that my ears have ever felt um and then clean break i mean it's it's just been a a pleasant surprise you know i i try i've had so many different experiences um that i've been fortunate enough to have and and earned and and uh and all that and i just try to be very grateful for everything but i if i'm going into something new i set no expectation um for everything with interviews yeah. with work with songwriting with you know mm -hmm. playing a show especially like i don't set an expectation of like well the show last night was the greatest show mm -hmm. ever you know and this one's not gonna be um <laughs> you know uh but just be like i'm getting paid to make music i'm i'm mm -hmm. in my home studio mm -hmm. talking about an album that i recorded yeah. like this is awesome it's really cool and just being happy and and yeah. grateful and thankful for you know each different opportunity mm -hmm. that uh continues so yeah i i definitely um i mean me the songwriters um uh, we're we're all yeah <laughs> i'm 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 stoked to be with frontiers and mm -hmm. i just love the the creative outlet that they give me and mm -hmm. there's a lot of possibilities yeah that's i like that word there's a lot of possibilities with frontiers and uh somebody i saw some fan post something that was like you know would you ever do an album with nathan james and and uh i was like yeah i want to do an album with i already pitched an album with nathan james and renan zonta oh, um nice. which is which is <laughs> cool that now it's like renan's in skills nathan's in iconic i'm in clean break and so like if there's ever a tour or if there's ever mm -hmm. shows played, I, I, I'm pulling for that to be the lineup, mm -hmm. those three. Mm -hmm. I don't care what order, doesn't matter to me. And then at the end, you know, bring Oz Fox out and then there's a striper set. Like, yeah. just do that, you know? Yeah. Like, Oz got left out. Where's Oz? <laughs> uh, <laughs> there's no Oz in any of the groups. Um, yeah. it's, it's strange. But um, yeah, I just feel like that'd be, I feel like it'd be a, a hell of a show. Yeah. a hell of a show and i just love to work with those guys i've never met them uh in in yeah. real life well you mentioned earlier you got the first durbin show coming up in august um any other live work on the horizon i mean i know striper's always on the road so who knows if we'll ever get to play with clean break but if the discussion's been there you know what's on your calendar live wise we haven't discussed it for clean break yet We'll probably wait till the album comes out, um, you know, see what the reception is and all that mm -hmm. stuff. Um, but so far it's been really positive and it's, I'm really stoked about that. Uh, for Durbin, um, something, this show just happened to fall in my lap. Mm -hmm. uh, my lap is, my email uh, is located in my lap apparently. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and yeah, it just, it just kind of, uh, it just kind of happened. And it was like, August 26th, bottom of the hill, San Francisco with enough's enough. They're on frontiers and nerd Halen. And uh, I was like, it's, it's crazy. Like going back to the humble and grateful and everything. 
Um, I'm a firm, firm believer in um, the power of attraction Hmm. because whether it's coincidence or not, there's been so many things, many, many things that were not, that would not have remotely been possible to have happened uh, if not for thinking and putting that energy into the universe and then that coming back. I just, I don't know. I grew up going to church, good little Christian boy, my striper. And, uh, and, and, but, but this is like, it's gone beyond that. You know, it's, uh, uh, I've gone beyond. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I happen to just say to myself, gosh, I really want to play a Durban show. I'm <laughs> just ready. I want it. And then it appeared in my inbox mm-hmm. and, uh, and I couldn't be more excited. Very, 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 very excited. So playing, well, playing uh, uh, more than half the record. Well, man, I tell you, you're living all of our dreams. That that's for sure. <laughs> and we've been Thank spending you. some time here with just one of the really good guys in this business, James Durbin. The band and the record are called Clean Break, out everywhere July eighth. It's a great record. It, it will definitely make a lot of top ten lists at the end of this year. That's for sure. James, thank you you so much for taking the time to do this. Best of luck with the record. And uh, hopefully we'll talk again soon. We definitely will. I appreciate you, Jeff. Thanks a lot, man. Bye. Bye.